Okay, um, it's been about a week and a half since I've done this 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 project, um, and I'm in way better state because I went on vacation. So, <laughs> and I do have three new new releases, um, or not new releases, but you know what I mean. The first album is by a group called Mink. Um, it's a self-titled album. Came out in 19. What year did it come out? Um, 2007, so it's relatively recent, well, you know, give or take. Um, the most interesting thing about Make is this cover, um, which looks like something taken from any tattoo shop's book. Um, it's just a pink background with a, a Day of the Dead skull, blah, 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 you know. So, musically, they, you know, here's the picture of the band. They're very boring, incredibly boring, very uninteresting just one of the mill, very one of the mill. I understand why they're in the dollar ninety nine bin. So I give these guys one star. Okay. Mink. Second one is a group called Warlord with Rock the Foe Hammer. Warlord came out in ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine. Um this album is interesting because I re I really like the album musically. Um they're they kind of remind me of Unsane. The, the voice is the voice is kind of down low, which, which kind of makes it like so he has to scream to be heard over the guitar and the bass and the drums. Um, it's kind of you know make is overly produced and um, they sound way way too clean. And this it's kind of muddy and has a, a very rock and roll good good you know noise sound. Um, so I like this album. It's Ironically, I think it's funny because they're very Jesus-y. So it's a very Jesus, a pro-Jesus album, which I think is kind of interesting. I'm not pro-Jesus, I don't believe in but but um, being an atheist, I find it really interesting that these guys are really into Jesus and they choose this, you know, to do, to spread the word, if you will. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's different. I mean, after all, how many bands sing about drugs and you know, sex and drugs and, you know, it's just boring. So why not throw some Jesus in there? Um, so I like this. I'm going to give this a four out of five. I'm not into, I hate the title, Rock the Faux Hammer, um, and I'm not into Jesus. So, like I said, I'm an atheist. So I'm not into the, if you read the lyric sheet, it's annoying because it's all Bible quotes and that's, you know, but when you listen to the album, you don't get the preachy feel. So it, it's it's a great album. I, well, not great. That's kind of, that's kind of, Anyway, but it's a good album. They they did a good job, and I really really like the way that they decided to go with their message. So for people that are into Jesus and are looking for um, good rock bands to be in that are into Jesus, you know that are like you know into Jesus and <clears throat> don't like the fact that all the rock bands don't support it. This is a good one. You know, Warlord. You could you could listen to them. You listen to some great rock and roll. Um, great kind of guttural rock and roll, um, and then also be pro Jesus at the same time. So, I give this a four out of five stars. Okay, the last one is a group called Lifestyle. Apparently, they're from Boston, um, which is where I'm from, and I have never heard of these guys. This album came out in '98, and it's called At the Risk of Sounding Pretentious. Okay, and they're called Lifestyle. They're incredibly bad. <laughs> and I thought they were a joke, and then I did find out some stuff online about them. Um, they are the ashes of, there was, used to be another band with a really bad name, but I'm from Boston, and I know a lot of bands in Boston. I used to be in a band in Boston. So I know, and I've never heard of these guys, and I'm not saying that I'm on the pulse of the Boston music scene, but I think I would have known them. I would have, I know enough I know enough people currently in bands, and, I've, and I know enough of the bars and the places to go, and, and I know enough of the scene to know if there was a band like this, I would know. <laughs> Somebody would have told me. <laughs> Their influences are like Culture Club, Duran Duran, ABC, No Romantic, you know, I love 80s music, so I, that's another reason why I think I would have known, known that, especially they have a, a P.O. box in Boston, and they're incredibly horrible. Songs like Yard Sale and Lawyer Lover and Heather Chrome and Wedding Day and JC oh JC Penny Model 
where they sing about being J.C. Penney models. Who the hell is J.C. Penney models? Are J.C. Penney, are there any J.C. Penneys even around? I don't, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, so I give this a one star. Um, this is really bad synth pop. It sounds like Euro pop. Like if they were trying to do a Euro pop album, that they succeeded. It's very boring. Sounds like sounds like French. They sound like I thought they were from France. They sounded like really bad, like French pop. And if you've ever been to Europe, um, and had the displeasure of hearing like Euro MTV, like me, I was stuck at I was once I was in Germany and I was stuck in, in this video bar, and the Euro Euro. MTV was on, and all they played was these like really horrible like, pop bands, synth pop bands, and I was like, what the fuck? And the, trust me, the music that they play on the Euro, the MTV Euro, is different than the music they play here. Not that they play anything good on the MTV here, but I'm just saying, it's fucked up. Um, and so is Lifestyle, and they're really bad, and they're horrible, and they wear way too much eyeliner. Um, and hair gel, which I, I usually have no, nothing against because I do love the 80s, like a lot of people, but <sighs> not in 2011, sorry.